Hello everyone, and welcome to another information technology lesson. Today, we will be looking at word processing formatting features, part one. Our objectives for today are to review the structure of the office ribbon, learn how to highlight or block a portion of text, and lastly, to use formatting features in MS Word to format text in a document. For this, we are going to be using a Word document. Now, the first thing we will look at is the review of the Office Ribbon. Now, this entire space that the mouse is going over is called your Office Ribbon. Your office ribbon is broken down into what we call tabs. And these tabs are file, home, insert, design, page layout, references, mailings, review, and view. Each tab is further broken down into groups. For example, our home tab has groups such as clipboard, font, paragraph, styles and editing. And the others are also broken down into their various groups. But for this lesson, we will be focusing on the font group as well as the paragraph group. The first thing that we're going to do is to bold a heading, or at least before we learn to bold the heading, learn how to block a portion of text. It is important to note that before you can perform any formatting features on any body of text, you must highlight that portion of text. By highlighting, I mean to block the portion of text or to select the portion of text. There are different ways that we can do this. And during this lesson, we will learn those different ways. The simplest way is, in the case of this heading, formatting text paragraphs and headings, I am going to position my cursor to the left of the heading by clicking on my mouse. And you will see the cursor blinking on that side. Now, in order for me to highlight that portion of text, I must click where the mouse is blinking, where I have selected first. And I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and drag in a straight line across until I get to the end of the word headings. And that is highlighting or blocking. A second method which is easier would be to position my cursor to the left of that very line. When I see the cursor changes to this white arrow, then I simply click and it will highlight that line. Okay, let us now get into the formatting features. So I'm going to bold this heading. First step, highlight the heading. Then we go to the home tab and we go to the font group and click on B. Next heading. This heading asks us to italicize the heading. So first step again, highlight the heading, go to the home tab, font group, and click on the I. Notice how the text is now slanted from left to right, and whereas with the board, the text becomes darker and a bit little fatter. Then we're going to underline this heading. Highlight the heading again. Go to the home group if it is not yet selected. For, sorry, home tab, font group, and then click on the U. Now there are different ways that we can do underline. If we click on the U just as it is, it will give you one underline. However, if we click on the arrow beside it, then we can have double underline, a darker bolded underline, a dashed, or dotted underline, and so on and so forth. Of course, if you wanted to take it out, you'd simply select none, or this, or highlight the heading, and then deselect the U. But because we want to underline it, we are going to click back on the U. Change in font, co font color. Let me put font here. When we change font color, a lot of persons tend to confusing it with highlighting. So we highlight the text, and by highlighting, I mean Talking about a different highlighting, when you take your highlighter and highlight a portion of text in your textbook or your 
notebook. This highlighting that I did a while ago is a little different. In this case, I'm selecting a portion of text to work on. So I highlight the text and I go to the font group under the home tab. I look for the A with the color underneath it. And most of all the icons, if you put the mouse over it and hover the mouse, it will tell you what that icon does. Now, if I want the color that is currently under the A, which is red, I can simply just click the A. However, if I want to choose a different font color, I must drop down the arrow beside the A and select the color that I want. So I want green, I'm going to select green. Now we have subscript and superscript. And these two formatting features are often confused by students. One of the mnemonics that I tend to use to help my students is this. When we think about subscript, think about the word sub. And from the word sub, we think about submarine. Submarines dive down under the sea. And as such, when we create a subscript on a portion of text, it goes below the main text. So in this case, I want to change this to log2 to log subscript2. So I highlight the two which is going to be subscripted. Go to the Home tab, Font Group. And I'm going to select the X that has the two to the lower portion of the X. I'm going to click on it. And so we have subscript2. For superscript, think about Superman or Superwoman. Superman or Superwoman fly up. And as such, your superscript text, whether it's a number, a letter, or a word, is going to be placed above the main text. So we highlight the two and we look for the X that looks like X squared and we click on it, this icon here. And there we have our superscript. Now for the font size, highlight the text, go to the font group, and we have two boxes here, two drop down boxes. The one which has a number in it is the one that allows you to change your font size. In this case, you want to use font size 20. So I drop down the arrow and I select 20. Alternatively, that I'm going to undo, and the undo button is to the very top of the word processing document. Here it is. It's an arrow pointing to the left. I'm going to undo because alternatively, I could have selected the text, gone to the box, and typed in the number. And this is specifically useful for times when the font size you want is not listed in the list. For example, I wanted 23 or 25. I would have to type it in because those are not available in the list. So I'm going to select 20. How do we highlight text as in highlight it as if we are um, making a portion stand out? Like when we highlight our textbook or our notebooks when we are studying. We select the text as usual. So in this case, no, I'm going to be selecting several paragraphs and there are different ways to do it. We can click to the left again, hold down the left mouse button and drag all the way down to the last punctuation mark, which is a full stop on the right. Or we could position our cursor on the left hand side again. When the arrow comes, when the white cursor comes up, we can click, highlight the first, sentence, hold on the left mouse button and drag down to the very last sentence or line. Alternatively, we could click at the beginning, click at the beginning, hold on the shift key on our keyboard and click to the right of the full stop. Full stop in this case is the last punctuation mark. So you click to the right of the last punctuation mark or word, and in this case, we have a full stop. So we click to the right of the full stop and it highlights everything quickly for us. So now that we have highlighted our text or selected our text, we go to the highlight icon in the font group and it has an A, a B, what looks like a paintbrush and a color underneath it. So if I want the color that is displayed underneath it, then I would just click on the face of the icon here. In this case, like this. However, if I didn't want it to be yellow, I would have to click on the drop down arrow and then select the color that I want. So in this case, I would like this pinkish color and I'm going to select that and click on the highlight. Oh, I'm going to highlight the portion of text. 
All right, so I click and I drag and highlight the portion of text. Okay, I'm gonna deselect it so that I won't be highlighting anything more. It says change font or font style or font face. And I have these different ones, ver versions of the same thing because you will find that in different books, it is called different things. Most times it is referred to as font style. So as usual, we highlight our paragraph. And to change a font style, you have, would have remembered previously that I said that there are two boxes in the font group. The second one, or the first one that appears, would be your font style box. So we drop it down. And we want I want to change it to, let me see now, elephant. So I'm going to scroll down. I can scroll with my mouse here, or I can click on the vertical scroll bar and scroll, click on it, drag down and look for elephant. So here is elephant, I select it. Alternatively, if they say the, take the font is far down on the list and they don't want to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list, you could simply, I'm going to undo, click in the box and type in elephant and press enter and it will change just the same. For the line spacing, I'm going to highlight the paragraph. Now, most persons, when they do line spacing, will simply come to the paragraph group under the home tab. And this icon right here, that has a bidirectional arrow with some lines on the right of it, is your line spacing icon. We can click on it and select 1.0 for single line spacing. However, I like to launch the paragraph dialog box or the settings, paragraph settings box. So I click on it. And the reason why I like to use this feature is because if you're going to be doing APA formatting, it is best for you to come here and make the following choices. You're going to set your before spacing to zero, your after to zero. So in this case, the before is already zero, the after is eight. So we're going to use the down arrow and go down, click on it until we get zero point. Then the line spacing, we want it to be single. So we drop it down and we select single. And we say, don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. Now, the reason why we select this option is you may not realize that every time you go to a new paragraph, word processor puts a blank line in between the paragraphs, but you really can't sit, click in that blank line, but it is there. So when you select this now, it removes that blank line. So the gap between the first, the last line in the first paragraph and the first line in the second paragraph looks the same as the gaps between the lines in the paragraphs. Then we click OK, and there we have our single line spacing. Now we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the others. 1.5, highlight the paragraph, launch the paragraph settings box, set our before and after to zero, and change the line spacing to one and a half lines and check the box that says, don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. And I'm just gonna just run it with the double line spacing, highlight, Paragraph settings dialog box, change here, set to double line spacing, check the box, click OK. Now we are down to paragraph alignment or justification. So there are different ways to mention some of these because different authors write it different ways. So we have right alignment or just right justification. In this case, it in, in Microsoft where it just says align right or align left. Good. So I'm going to highlight this portion of text. I'm going to go to the paragraph group. And these one, two, three, four icons are your alignment icons. So it says you're to align right. So I'm going to select this one, which has the lines going to the right and the straight edge of the paragraph is on the right hand side. So notice for right alignment, the straight edge of the paragraph is on the right hand side. So I select that and you will notice how straight this side is, but how jagged this side is. Center alignment now, we highlight the text and then we click on the center icon and center alignment icon. For left alignment, highlight the text again and I'm going to right align it so that you can see 
what it looks like when we left align it. So we highlight the text. And when we left align it now, you will notice that the straight edge is on the left hand side. Previously, with the center alignment, you will notice that each line is placed in the middle of the page. Okay? Fully justified now. We highlight and we select the justify icon. You will notice now that with the justify icon, both the left and the right margins or sides of the paragraph are straight, except for this last line that doesn't have enough words to take you to the end of the line. And so it is somewhat jagged, but the remaining portion of the text is straight on both sides and such, it is justified. And this concludes our lesson, part one of formatting features. In our next lesson, we will be looking at some additional formatting features. For example, things like bullets and numbering, margins, page and section breaks, among other things.